everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be showing you our autumn books for this year. I am so excited. This is one of my favourite things about a new season is to change our books over to the new seasonal reads. Now I do have Toby, my youngest, my two year old here with me today. So if you hear some shuffling and some noises it's just him playing on the ground with the books. Yeah, so. let's just get going. I've got so many books this year. Um, I've got books from last year, I've got new books, and I also have some really beautiful um, books all about seasons and changing seasons that I'll be showing in my next um, Morning Basket video. So do check that out. Um, I haven't put them on the shelf because there's just enough already. <laughs> um, as you can see, there are tons of books. Um, but yeah, let's get going. First up, I've got The Beautiful Sweep by Louise Gregg and Julia Sarda, I believe. This one has such a beautiful cover and gorgeous illustrations about a little boy with a lot of emotions. Um, it's obviously very seasonal with the lovely illustrations of all the leaves, but it's also a nice story about how to handle um, your emotions if you're feeling angry. Um, so a lovely book for young children. As always I have my Winstone Press seasonal collection of poems, songs and stories for young children. I love this collection. It's got very sweet nature poems, some songs that you could play on a piano or a recorder, as well as some lovely um, stories at the back, such as the autumn blanket, the little grey uh, pony crossing the sea. Um, really lovely. Every time um, I pick up the Winstone Press books, I'm really impressed. And this is definitely a must have. Sometimes we end up putting these in our morning basket and possibly I might do that with this one too. A new book for us this year is Sam Usher's Storm. Um, these books, there's a whole season of them based on um, sort of seasonal weather. So there's snow, there's sun, there's rain and then there is storm for autumn. So again, lots of lovely illustrations of leaves and Sorry, that's the noise of a uh, bad toy <laughs> that Toby's pressing. Uh, but this is the story of a grandpa and a boy um, and they want to go and fly a kite. So perfect for autumn and yes, yeah, such engaging pictures and a beautiful story. Of course, one of the main themes of autumn for us is apples and we are doing a whole apple study in our morning basket, but I do have this one out on our shelves and it's the Apple Cake by Nyenka Van Hitchum and Marjan Van Zyl. I'll link all these below. Um, beautiful, dreamy Waldorf illustrations in this one. And a lovely story about um, sharing and kindness and has a recipe for an apple cake in the back. So this would make a lovely book that you could read together with your children and then go pick some apples and make an apple cake at the end. It's... We've had this one for a few years now. It's the It Was A Cold Dark Night book by Tim Hopgood. We really like this book. It's very simple. It's about a hedgehog trying to find its home on a cold night. So it's perfect for discussing hibernation and hedgehogs. And I think Toby's gonna really enjoy this this year. Harvest Moon is another great nature subject to talk about with children in autumn. And um, I love this story Hi. called Hello Harvest Moon by Ralph Fletcher. So as you can see, the illustrations are really beautiful in this, lovely and big. And just sort of tells you all about the beautiful harvest moon. So perfect one uh, for this time of year. The Busy Little Squirrel by Nancy Taffery is specifically for Toby because he's a little bit younger. And this is about a squirrel that is obviously very, very busy getting ready for autumn. So he sees lots of friends that he talks to. And yeah, it's just beautifully illustrated, very sweet, easy story for toddlers to follow. Another book for little ones is Autumn by Ali Busby. We've had this for a few years and I imagine this will probably possibly be the last year that we have it because Toby's two now, so this will be perfect for him this year. Uh, but it's about lots of little children that do all these autumnal activities like baking, picking blackberries, chasing leaves and collecting apples. So a really lovely book and yes, I am missing a corner here. Now, this book is one that I usually put in our winter bookshelves, but actually I decided that I'm gonna bring it out for autumn. It's Sleep Tight Farm, A Farm Prepares for Winter by Eugenie Doyle. I love this book so much. It's definitely one of my all time favorites. The illustrations are so amazing in this book. 
really glorious as you can see and basically it just goes through this farm as it sort of prepares for winter so it goes through some of the things that happen in summer um, like picking berries and then the things they do to prepare for the winter so this is a great book for autumn actually because it goes through all the things that we'll be doing in autumn to prepare for winter here on our own farm and yeah the illustrations are just magical what i'm really excited about is the boy who loved everyone by jane porter i was really drawn in by the really cozy illustrations in this book and the story is really really gorgeous too so it's about a little boy who's at nursery and he just loves everyone so he tells everybody that he loves them and he sort of realizes that he's getting a strange reaction and basically it's just about him exploring those feelings and learning about love and being accepted as well into this class so really beautiful highly recommend this i'm just absolutely obsessed with the pictures in this and I can't wait for Rupert to see this because I know he's going to love the story and love the pictures. Another new one is What to Look for in Autumn. This is a ladybird book and this is a new edition. And it goes through all the things that you can see in nature in autumn, like mushroom season, the bug hotel. And then it has a little bit of writing here. So this one is just perfect for slightly older children so for my four-year-old plus it's perfect great for a little bit of nature study and again this would work really well in the morning basket as well i've just got it out of my shelves for now but yeah i might move this into my morning basket up in the garden and down in the dirt by kate mesner is another book that we've had for a while this is a beautiful book if you haven't already got it i highly recommend it it's one that works all year round because it talks about the whole sort of seasonality of what a garden looks and feels like and all the jobs that happen on it. Um, the illustrations are very, very well done, very beautiful. Nice, easy story to read or to read out loud. And yeah, just really gorgeous. Perfect, I think, for, like I said, any time of year, but we're going to read it in autumn this year. A new book is Leaf Man by Lewis and um, this is one that I tried to buy last year but for some reason my order got cancelled and I'm excited that I finally got my hands on a copy this year so I haven't even looked at this before but I get the idea that it's um, pictures made up of leaves so really interesting like um, cut out here which is so beautiful and so much fun with these um, sort of animals and people things like that made out of leaves so I, my idea with this one is to obviously read it together and then we're going to go out and pick some leaves and try and create some pictures uh, using this book as inspiration. This is a real autumnal classic so yeah I'm really really glad that we have a copy this year. So moving on to the next row and that's quite enough books already but of course you know I'm a book addict so I had to get more. Um, I've got Kennard Pack's Goodbye Summer Hello Autumn. This is um, a story about transitioning from summer to autumn. So lots of lovely summery pictures to start with and then things like leaves and rain and all the changes of colours throughout this book. So a lovely story to introduce the idea of seasons to children. The Foxwood Treasure by Cynthia and Brian Patterson. Um, this is a book we've had for a while as well. It's a second hand book so it's a little bit tired already but um, it's just holding on in there. And this is a little bit of a longer story but perfect for a gentle uh, chapter book style book that I'll be reading with Rupert. Great illustrations, they remind me a bit of Brambley Hedge. Um, I don't like it as much as I like Brambley Hedge, but I still think this book is very sweet. And um, yeah, we'll read this kind of like ch a chapter or a couple of pages um, at a go. And yeah, I think Rupert's gonna love this this year. I couldn't be without a Shirley Hughes book, of course, and this is Autumn from the wonderful Nursery Collection, which is now actually a lot easier to get hold of if you've been trying to find it. It has seasonal poems throughout the book um, and it's just like a small little book because it comes in a pack of different things. Lovely illustrations and yeah, I just think this is lovely. Rupert knows this book pretty much off by heart by now, but I'm excited to introduce it to Toby too. A new one for us is The Apple Pie Tree by Zoe Hall. I got this second hand, but it's a lovely book all about the story of apples, where they come from, how they get pollinated. And then at the end, all about picking them and making a beautiful apple pie. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's a recipe um, at the back. Um, yeah, there's a recipe at the back. So a little bit about 
how the bees help the apples grow and then there's a recipe there so yeah really pleased with that and I think that's going to be great as part of our apple study I've got here Fletcher and the Falling Leaves by Julia Rawlinson um, we've never had a Fletcher book and Fletcher's this little fox here um, but I've seen lots of great reviews about the Fletcher series so I was really excited to get ourselves a copy of this autumnal one um, there's ones for all seasons and the pictures in this are actually very Waldorf inspired, very gentle and dreamy. And um, the story is all about this little fox Fletcher and he's very worried that the leaves are falling off the tree and he tries to put the leaves back on. Um, beautiful story, very gentle and lovely. And yes, it reminds me a bit of um, Waldorf books. And then right at the back, let me show you. There's like a glittery, yeah, there's a sort of glittery tree at the back so very very pretty and yeah I'm sure this will become a fan favourite. Next up is Little Goose's Autumn by Ellie Willard. This is um, part of a series, the first book is called Little Bear's Autumn, uh, Little Bear's Spring sorry and then this is the autumn version. So this is the bear that's in the spring book and then this book is all about this goose learning about migration so he's sort of finding his way and yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, reads wonderfully, and yeah, this, I'm really, really excited to read this to the boys. I am a firm uh, fan of Daniela Drescher, even though I can't pronounce her name, and this is one of her books, it's called In the Land of Elves, and I really couldn't help myself because I just thought the cover was so beautiful on this. And the back reads, follow the secret world of the elves Hi. and their animal companions in amongst the tree roots and fields through the seasons. So again, this covers all the seasons, but I just thought it would be nice for this kind of transitional time of year. So I'll just give you a quick peek inside. I love the dreamy Waldorf um, pictures in this. Um, and I love all the little pixies and elves and fairies. I just think it's very magical and really nice one for autumn actually. So there we go. I've got a few hedgehog themed books, um, Rosie Wesley's The Very Helpful Hedgehog, we've had this for years now, and um, this is about a little hedgehog and a donkey and some apples. Great illustrations, quite funny as well, which is good, and yeah, just a favourite with the boys always. I borrowed this one from the library, but I am so glad I did, and I'm definitely going to pick up a copy for ourselves um, permanently, and this is Say Hi to Hedgehogs by Jane McGuinness. This is part of the Walker Books nature storybooks, which have like a whole uh, collection of beautiful books all about uh, nature and various things that happen in nature. This one follows a hedgehog and it's a great book for learning about all the things about hedgehogs and the illustrations are really superb in this. Um, I read it briefly a couple of weeks ago just to sort of see what it was like before I read it to the boys. And I have to say, this is absolutely fantastic. I love this page here. Um, it really does cover all the things that you would uh, want to know. And I learned quite a lot reading about it too. Um, so yeah, just so gorgeous. And I think, even though I probably said this a lot already, I think this is one of my favourites. Um, and it was such a surprise. I didn't expect this to be so good, but I do highly recommend it. And if you want to pick up just one hedgehog book, I think this would be the one. Of course, Brambley Hedge, I mentioned it before, always a favourite here, and it's uh, written by Jill Barclay. This is the story of some little mice and some of the adventures that Primrose the Mouse gets on, gets up to. And it's just so beautiful, wonderful illustrations, very, very cosy. And yeah, just, you can't go wrong with Brambley Hedge. It's a slightly longer storybook. I remember reading this when I was about six on my own. Um, but yeah, you can definitely read it out to younger children too and just shorten the story. But the illustrations alone are so magical and absorbing that I highly recommend them for all age groups. Another firm favourite is Wild Child by Lynn Plod. Um This is such a beautiful book. It's all about Mother Nature trying to put her wild child down for a nap. And the wild child is autumn basically, so she's sort of trying to... Um, put them to bed and then winter will arrive. So lots of wonderful and um, beautiful um, evocative language in this one and gorgeous colours, again very Waldorf inspired. Um, this is hard to come by now and um, there's a whole range of these but I have never been able to get any of these other books uh, sadly even though I keep trying to find them. Um, but yeah you can try and find these on eBay or secondhand bookshops and well worth it. Um, I think they're really magical. I kept seeing this book uh, around and I was so excited to finally get a copy for my boys this year. It's Ox Cartman by Donald Hall. 
and this is a book about um, a family who load up their carts with all the things that they've made and grown through the seasons and they bring it to market and it's just so um, like slow and beautiful and handcrafted and just a really unique book and um, so I highly recommend that. I read it myself um, a couple of days ago and I just thought it was beautiful and I love those sort of folky illustrations in it too. Uh, so. We have Eva Maria Ott Heidmann's Her Herbst um, which is autumn in German I believe. This book is so beautiful. The illustrations are incredible. So it's a wordless book that just takes you through different scenes that you might see in autumn. So a book that's perfect for discussing um, with, with your children, just like chat about various things that you see. And yeah, it's just so magical. I had the summer version of this and it was just love at first sight. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to sitting down and talking about this book with the boys. I think it's just stunning, highly recommend it. Okay, another Zoe Hall book. So I already had the book about the apple tree by her and this is another one that I picked up second hand this year. And this one's called It's Pumpkin Time. And this one is all about growing a pumpkin and all the different st t uh, steps that you take to grow one. And then at the end, it's all about carving the pumpkin. So fantastic, there's a little bit of information about how it grows. So a fantastic one for us here on the farm where we grow pumpkins. The boys yeah. can kind of see the beginning process all the way to the finish. Um, I have got some more books on pumpkins that I'm saving for Halloween. And I'm going to bring out a bundle of Halloween books um, in the sort of middle of October. So I'll do another video for those books as well. Um, but yeah, I think this is perfect for the entirety of autumn. I'm almost done now. I've got three books left. Um, next up is Rose's Red Boots by Moira Finn. I thought this book just looked really sweet. It's about a little girl called Rosie and her red boots and going on adventures, doing things like splashing in puddles and flying her kite. There's lots of leaves and a naughty dog. And yeah, just, I thought this would just be very engaging for my boys. And I think it just is a very sweet story, great colors, very autumnal and yeah is absolutely perfect. There's also I think another book in this series that's more suited to spring. Um, I think it's Rose's Red Hat and it's all about wind and spring but this one's perfect for autumn. Okay second last book is The Leaf Thief by Alice Hemming. Now this out of all the books I have is probably the most unlike my style. This one's a little bit more like a cartoon almost or a comic strip. Um, it's all about this squirrel and it's all about the squirrel who thinks someone is stealing the leaves. And I just thought it just looked quite fun. The illustrations are really nice. It has like little speech bubbles and stuff. So it's a little bit different style to what I'm used to. But um, I just thought it looked really fun. It's quite a new release, I think. And I think Rupert might quite like this and think it's quite funny. So this is why I picked it up. Um, but yeah, I think it's very sweet and lovely and colourful and makes a great addition to our bookshelves. Last but definitely not least is Green on Green by Diane White. Now, if you watched my summer books, you'll have seen Blue on Blue uh, by Diane White that I had for summer. And I couldn't resist getting Green on Green as well. So this book, again, has the most incredible <laughs> illustrations. They're different in style to the one in Blue and Blue but they are just as lovely. So this one goes through summer and autumn. So that kind of transition from all the green of summer and all the things we do in summer. And then it shows you like the autumn colors as well. So look at that, so beautiful. It's just so evocative, quite nostalgic. And yeah, it just looks so beautiful. I just couldn't resist it. And then yes, there's some winter pictures in there as well. So. Oh, so pretty. It's just such a gorgeous book. I really love when I stumble across books like this that are just, I don't know, just something so magical about them. Um, there's the spring and summer tree on the inside cover and then the back there's the winter and autumn ones. Just, yeah, so well done, so well thought through um, and yeah, just incredible. Diane White has wonderful writing as well. Very, very poetic and um, yeah, just gorgeous. I'm really, really excited about this one. This is obviously one that you could put out on your shelves in spring, summer, autumn, or winter. So a great one if you want to just pick up 
one or two books about seasons, I highly recommend Diana White's books. They are really special, um, very magical, and something that would stay with your child for a long time. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed all these beautiful autumnal books and it's given you some ideas for books to read in the coming months. Make sure that you subscribe, give this video a like and a comment as well if you enjoyed it. And be sure to look out for my upcoming videos. I have a to be read pile of autumn books for myself. I also have some Halloween books that I'm gonna be sharing with you as well as a beautiful autumn basket. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.